Our series, Show and Tell, will take you inside some of the great libraries, both public and private, to explore books and treasures from Jewish history. So I was told that we are in the Butler, the Columbia Butler Library. Tell us where we really are, because I know I got that wrong. There's no question I got it wrong. We're in the Rare Book and Manuscript Library at Columbia University, which happens to be in the building called Butler Library. Gotcha. Uh, do we know who Butler was? I assume Nicholas not, Murray Butler was not a Menachem former. Butler. No, no, okay. no. Um, and I don't think he would want to be related to him. Um, Nicholas Murray Butler was a former president of Columbia, um, known for all sorts of things, including that he was not a big fan of Jews, although he did hire Salah Baron, who was an oh, amazing, who we love, uh, who One of we the great are very, very happy to have. So the, Columbia has an incredible Judaica collection. It does indeed. Very rare. How did it get all this stuff? So Columbia's collection began with Columbia University. The founder of Columbia University was Samuel Johnson, who was a Christian Hebraist. He was interested in the study of Hebrew. And he was collecting um, Hebrew books. He actually taught Hebrew at Columbia um, in 1754 when the university was established. And Hebrew continued to be taught as a classical language here through, through the 18th century. The founder of Columbia, Samuel Johnson, spoke and wrote Hebrew? Correct. And taught Hebrew? And taught Hebrew. As so fascinating. Yeah. In okay. fact, we have a grammar book handwritten by students of Johann Kunze, who was a professor of Hebrew in the 1790s, who taught here at Columbia. So it was important to him to start it to have Hebraic Judaica works. Why was that important to him? So this was very, um, very much a, a, I guess, a thing with the founding fonder, fathers. A number of the founding fathers actually spoke and studied Hebrew. Um, and so Hebrew was considered the language of the Old Testament. If you're going to truly study the Old Testament, you'll study it in its original language. And actually what we have here is the Kennecott Bible. This is a critical edition of the Bible uh, printed by Benjamin Kennecott in 1776 uh, to 8. And he collected manuscripts from around the world, including from one Jew in New York named Samson Simpson. Um, and it was a Columbia president actually who carried that manuscript from New York to London so that Benjamin Kennecott could use it as part of his work. Um, the Kennecott Bible was a subscription Bible so if you wanted to sort of like a Kickstarter if you wanted to buy it you sent them money in advance and you there there are these subscription lists at the, the very original, the original substack the, the, <laughs> exactly exactly um, so if you look at the beginning of the subscriber list in, in the Kennecott Bible, you have King's College Cambridge, King's College Aberdeen, and King's College New York, which is what became Columbia University. And in fact, uh, King's College is the only colonial subscriber to, uh, of, an in, of, of the institutions, all of which taught Hebrew. Harvard taught Hebrew, um, a fame, the earliest printer with, uh, of Hebrew with movable type. Judah Monis was a professor of Hebrew at Harvard. Um, and Yale, they taught Hebrew, but Columbia was the only actual subscriber to this monumental sort of critical edition of the Bible in the 18th century. So part of the founding of Columbia was an emphasis on Judaica, Hebraic works, and... I would caution to say Hebraic works rather than Judaica. Why is that wrong? So this is the, an interest in Hebrew as, a, as, a, as the language that Jesus spoke, as the language that was used in the Old Testament, in other words, the precursor to the New Testament which is different than how, how you or I would call the Hebrew Bible. Um, so it was, it was part of Christian studies to study Hebrew. And that was the interest in gotcha. the 18th century. Gotcha. I will say, though, that there was a Jewish trustee of Columbia, Gershom Satius, uh, in the late 18th century as well, partially because it was New York. There were Jews in New York, um, but there were all sorts of other reasons. So there was, there was Judaica, um, in other words, books about Jews, at Columbia beginning fairly early as well.